Hello everyone, in this video we'll be discussing microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Now it is important to understand what this disease is and we can kind of do this by looking at the name of the disease. Now micro means small, angio means vessel, pathic means disease. So this is going to be a disease of the small blood vessels. Hemolytic means that there's breakdown or destruction of red blood cells and this results in anemia. Now, in this disorder, there's basically going to be a formation of microthrombi. And this microthrombi can be formed by two disorders, either TTP or HUS, which we're going to discuss shortly. So there's going to be a formation of a microthrombi. And so because this microthrombi is formed, it is going to consume platelets to form this microthrombi. So we're basically using our platelets to form this microthrombi. As a result, patients are going to have low platelet numbers in their blood work. Now, if a red blood cell is passing this microthrombi, so imagine that this is a red blood cell, it can get damaged or sheared, and this can result in breakdown of red blood cells because now they're damaged and we can have a increase in turnover of these red blood cells as a result. And so this can lead to anemia, and this can also cause a histological finding known as a schistocyte which is going to be a finding that we will see when the red blood cells are sheared. Now, as I mentioned previously, this microthrombi formation can be either be due to TTP, which is an autoimmune process, or hemolytic uremic syndrome, which is going to be most commonly caused by endothelial damage by drugs or an infection. So with TTP, let's take a look at the name. So there's thrombotic means that there's a microthrombi formation. Thrombocytopenic means that there's thrombocytopenia or low platelet levels. And purpura is going to be a skin finding due to low platelet levels. So patients are going to have purpura, which is going to be a skin finding that we will see if there is a, uh, if there is uh, some abnormality in primary hemostasis which is occurring in these patients because now they have low platelet levels because they're using up the platelets in order to form a microthrombi. So TTP is going to be, again, autoimmune destruction of ADMTS13. Now let's discuss what ADMTS13 is. So if, so imagine that this is a blood vessel again. And so our blood vessels are going to be lined by endothelial cells. And so if the endothelial cells are damaged, we're going to have the release of von Willebrand factors. So they're going to be exposed and there's going to be a release of von Willebrand factors. And the release of von Willebrand factors are going to be, they're going to be released as multimers. So there's going to be basically a bunch of these von Willebrand factors that are linked. And so what Adam TS13 does is it converts these von Willebrand factor multimers. So I'm going to write Adam um, or A13 to make it uh, shorter. So this is Adam TS13. It converts the von Willebrand factor multimers into a von Willebrand factor monomer. So it is going to convert these multimers into a monomer. So if we have a deficiency in Adam TS13, then we're basically going to have an increase in these von Willebrand factor multimers, and this increase in these multimers is going to create a platelet adhesion problem that is going to result in formation of a microthrombi. And so that is why the microthrombi formation occurs with TTP. Now, this process is preferentially going to occur in the central nervous system in these patients. So it's going to occur in that tissue. It can also occur in the kidney, but it is going to preferentially affect the central nervous system. Now let's discuss hemolytic uremic syndrome. So in hemolytic uremic syndrome, there's going to be a damage to the endothelial cells, right? So this damage to the endothelial cells can be occurring either after an infection or by drugs. Classically, this damage to the endothelial cells are going to occur after 
a infection with E. coli O15787 strain. So this is most commonly going to present in children after they eat a um, undercooked beef. So basically the E. coli toxin is going to damage the endothelial cells. And again, this um, damage to the endothelial cells can lead to lower levels of Adam TS13. And so we can get this buildup of the von Willebrand factor multimers. And as well as the damage to the endothelial cells can also cause a increase in microthrombi formation. And so again, we're going to have consumption of platelets when we're forming that microthrombi. And so that is also going to uh, present very similarly in lab findings to TTP as a result. And one important thing to know about hemolytic uremic syndrome is that it is going to preferentially affect the kidneys. So this is one difference that we have to keep in mind with HUS versus TTP in that HUS is preferentially going to affect the kidney. So a way you can remember this is the name kind of gives us away what is going on. So there's hemolytic breakdown of blood cells, as we discussed, uh, uremic. So there's going to be a increase in urea in our blood due to kidney damage. So remember that this endothelial damage is occurring in the kidney. So tissues in the kidney are getting damaged and because they're getting damaged, we're going to have an increase in urea. So this is where the uremic comes in the name of the disease. So this is hemolytic uremic syndrome. And remember that this commonly affects the kidneys. And you can remember this by looking at the name of the disease. So one more thing that I want to show you guys is these schistocytes, which occur as the red blood cells pass through that microthrombi, they get damaged. And so on histological slides, we're going to see schistocytes, which are going to be the shearing or red blood cells. And when the red blood cells are sheared, it is going to create these horns that you can see over here. So this is going to be a classic histological slide that we will see in um, TTP as well as HUS.